let's see about atrophic rhinitis also called as oziana this is also called as oziana because one of the etiology for atrophic rhinitis is klebsiella oziana this is a bacteria which can lead to atrophic rhinitis that is why it is also called as oziana atrophic rhinitis is a chronic inflammatory condition of the nose as the name suggests there is atrophy of the nasal mucosa as well as the atrophy of turbinate bones superior middle and inferior turbinates and atrophic rhinitis the nasal cavities are roomy roomy nasal cavities and there is presence of foul smelling crest next coming to the etiology for atrophic rhinitis the etiology can be remembered with a mnemonic hernia h e r n i a here h stands for hereditary e for endocrinal disturbances like atrophic rhinitis is mostly seen in females around puberty this is associated with endocrinal abnormalities which are particularly related to estrogen next r stands for race some races like white and yellow races are more susceptible for development of atrophic rhinitis next n n stands for nutritional deficiency especially deficiency of vitamin a d or iron next i i stands for infections infection most commonly with the bacteria klebsiella oziana that is why atrophic rhinitis is also called as oziana other bacteria which can lead to atrophic rhinitis are diphtheroids proteus staphylococci and streptococci lastly a a is for autoimmune atrophic rhinitis can also be caused due to autoimmune process this is the etiology for atrophic rhinitis next is the pathology here the normal respiratory epithelium that is the ciliated columnar epithelium is replaced by stratified squamous epithelium and as the name suggests there is atrophy of the nasal mucosa and the turbinates also there is atrophy of other glands the mucosa the turbinates of the nasal cavity and there is obliterative end arthritis
also the nasal bones of the turbinates undergo resorption there is resorption of the turbinate bones due to which the nasal cavity becomes roomy roomy nasal cavity is an important feature of atrophic rhinitis because of the widening of nasal chambers next coming to the clinical features of atrophic rhinitis as we have seen because of the endocrinal factor it is more commonly seen in females and it starts around puberty the characteristic features are roomy nasal cavity because of the resorption of the turbinate bones then foul smelling discharge so the nasal cavity is roomy there is foul smell but the patient is unaware of the smell so he has anosmia because of this condition the patient is said to have merciful anosmia he has foul smell but he cannot smell his own so this is merciful anosmia the other features are there is formation of crusts which on removal leads to epistaxis because of the crust formation there can also be nasal obstruction in spite of the nasal cavities being roomy and in such patients there can also be atrophy seen in pharynx larynx etc next is prognosis prognosis is good for atrophic rhinitis it tends to resolve spontaneously in the middle age lastly coming to the treatment part diagnosis is based on the clinical presentation treatment treatment can be medical or surgical the medical treatment includes maintenance of good nasal hygiene and removal of crusts this can be done by many methods first is nasal irrigation and removal of crusts this nasal irrigation can be performed by using normal saline or an alkaline solution which is made by dissolving one part of sodium bicarbonate one part of sodium biborate and two parts of sodium chloride in 280 ml of water next this nasal irrigation loosens the crust and it also removes the foul smelling discharge other methods include using 25% of glucose in glycerin so after the crust are removed 
this 25% glucose in glycerin is used to paint the nasal cavity this inhibits the growth of the organisms which are responsible for foul smell other methods include using local antibiotics to treat the infectious cause of atrophic rhinitis for which the chemicitin solution is used this is also called as antiosiana solution next other medical measures include estradiol spray because one of the etiology factor being endocrine disturbances also potassium iodide can be given which liquefies the nasal secretion these are all the medical measures now coming to surgical surgical methods of treatment of atrophic rhinitis include first is young's operation young's operation here both the nostrils are closed completely and these are opened after 6 months or so this is young's operation so because of this it is believed that the nasal atrophied nasal mucosa reverts back to normal and there is reduction of crusting next another surgical method is modified young's operation this is performed nowadays so in young's operation both the nostrils are closed whereas in modified young's operation we only close the nostrils partially we partially close the nostrils so that the patient is comfortable this is modified young's operation and this is as efficiency as young's operation the other surgical methods include methods to reduce the size of nasal cavities that is methods to narrow the nasal cavities like injection of teflon place teflon paste is injected submucosally by which we can narrow the nasal cavity same way we can inject other materials like fat cartilage bone etc next is medial displacement of lateral wall displace the lateral wall medially to reduce the size of nasal cavity atrophic rhinitis is usually bilateral but in rare cases it can be unilateral like for example when there is extreme deviation of nasal septum this can be accompanied by atrophic rhinitis on one side that is the wider side this is all about atrophic rhinitis Thank you.